Good night, everyone. Um, our Bible reading is taken from John 21, 1 to 14. <laughs> so thank you so let me bring you back to our bible reading uh before we before i read the bible this when i read this scripture it reminded me of ourselves as individuals a lot of time we know god we know that he is there but we doubt and we forget that he is there just like the disciples in this reading so i'll take you through uh john 21 1 to 14 it says, Later Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord he put on his tunic, jumped into the water and headed to show. The other stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore for they were only about a hundred yards from shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to have some fun tonight. <laughs> All right, Rebecca, you left your Bible up here. Jason left his Bible. You're organised. Now, I want to know, have you caught a fish? Okay, give me a wave. Did you catch a fish in your life? No fish? Who's caught? Who some people have not caught a fish. I'm going to show you a picture of me at the time when I caught my first fish. Here it is. This is me. Yeah. I was cute back then. And I can tell you I was so excited. My family was camping and I fought with this fish and my little fingers were shaking and I'm and you know, we'd like this and this, and then finally this magnificent fish, about that big, came in and we ate this fish for lunch and it was beautiful. Now I will tell you what really happened. <laughs> if we can have the next slide. I caught a fish like that. This fish, its name is carp. carp. This is a mud fish. Um, a dirt fish, right? And um, it was small, it was dirty, and my parents, they pretended to be very happy and they cooked up this disgusting fish and they pretended to eat it 
And I ate it and I caught my first fish. This is the life of a five-year-old. Now, the fishing story here with Jesus is a much better fishing story than my fishing story. And I want to share it with you. We actually have four different steps in the Bible uh, in chapter 21. If we can have a slide for those four steps. We have the fishing event and then actually some important proof. Today, if there's no photo, right, it did not happen. You know what I'm talking about. So this proof is an important thing. And then there are two stories we won't spend much time on. One story about Peter and one story about John. And that is the last chapter of John's Gospel, a wonderful part of God's Word. So let's move on to the fishing event. And this is actually number three time. This is the third time that Jesus met his disciples after the resurrection, after he came back from being dead. So this is really important. Right. So what happens is... They are feeling a bit sad, right? They're feeling a bit sad. And Peter says, let's go fishing. You know, us men, we don't deal with emotions very well. So we just, he just went fishing. And the, the other men, they say, we'll go with you. So there are seven disciples out in the boat and they fish all night. And how much do they catch? Zero, right. And so... It's very dark and the sun is just starting to come up, right? And they're just a little way out from the shore, right? And they see this person on the beach, just this little like stick figure on the beach. And the voice calls out to them and it says, it says, fellows, have you caught any fish? And actually, if you read very carefully, what it's saying is, hey, kids, you haven't caught anything, have you? That's the kind of Greek. That's, the, that's what's translated. And so the person knows that they had a bad night, right? And maybe the person on the beach is having some fun. Do you know um, the word banter or fun anyway? I think Jesus is having a bit of fun with his disciples now. No, they say, we have not caught any fish. And then Jesus says, throw the net that you're fishing on the other side and fish on this side. Really, is this a good idea? Is this good advice? Dennis, you catch fish. If you put the, the line down on this side and then you wind it in and you put the line down on the other side, is it very different? <laughs> okay, don't worry, I don't want your advice. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm an expert, that if there, are, if there are hundreds of fish down there, they're going to swim into my net on this side just the same as on this side, right? Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> so anyway, they follow this silly advice, and do you know what happens? They catch 153 fish, large fish in this net. Normally they pull the net into the boat. The net's too heavy. They can't even get the, the net into the boat. There are so many fish in this net. So clearly this is a miracle, right? This is a big sign that points to who this person on the beach is. Okay, and I already told you, it's gonna be Jesus. This is a miracle. So then we move on to the second part of this story. And what we are thinking about is what are we trying to prove? Normally, for me, I'm trying to prove that I caught a really big fish. But actually, maybe we're trying to prove something different today. Then the disciple Peter lo Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. They realized a miracle's happened. That's Jesus. And so Peter gets so excited, he puts his jumper on, and he swims to shore, right? It's only 70 meters, it's not far to shore. He swims to shore just so that he can be the first to be with Jesus. Just a little bit of a spoiler is Peter has a guilty conscience because just not long ago, Peter said, 
I don't know who he is. Peter didn't want to get into trouble from being with Jesus and he denied Jesus three times. But Jesus is pretty nice to Peter. Jesus says, bring some of the fish that you've caught. And so Peter, he's, oh, I'm going to prove that I'm, I'm wonderful. And he gets the big net and drags the net in. And so Peter brings the fish and the net doesn't break at all. That is another miracle. If you're into fishing, you know that if you don't end up un with a big tangle, it's a miracle. All right. Dennis agrees with me this time. And Jesus says something really, really wonderful. And, but I have to prepare for this moment. You see, while all of this is happening and the disciples are rowing their boat in with the fish, Jesus has a campfire on the beach. Doesn't that sound beautiful? The sun's just coming up. There's a beautiful little campfire on the beach and Jesus has already got the first fish going over the flames. He's got some bread with him and he makes a fish sandwich. Right, now, we're talking. A fish sandwich. I've got fish fingers today. I hope that's okay. And Dennis, have you got any fish with you? Yeah. Out in the car? <laughs> okay. it'll, it'll, be, it'll get there. They're going to be beautiful. Normally, I use a toaster. Um, but today I just wanted one thing. Okay. Jesus says, now come and have some breakfast. Now I want you, I want your brain to explode at this moment. Right? Jesus could have said, Peter, you're a very horrible friend. I never want to talk to you again. Or he could have said, look at me. Look at these resurrection muscles. I've got an incredible body now that I've come back from the dead. Jesus could have done all sorts of things, but he caught up with his friends and he made them breakfast. And that would have been a beautiful moment to share. If I could go to one place in history, I would go to this beach and I would eat breakfast with Jesus. That would be incredible. You're a fisherman too. You would love this moment. Did you catch any fish this week? Yes? Buyung. You did catch fish this week. What sort of fish did you catch? That sounds pretty good. I don't really understand, but I don't think that's octopus. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? That's the question we're asking. That's the proof that we're talking about. Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. Right? The Lord, God, come back from the dead, served his friends the bread and the fish. These are some of the most beautiful words in the Bible. Jason was just talking about how Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And now 
we have Jesus serving breakfast. And this is what our wonderful Lord is like. This is more than just a happy reunion and a beautiful breakfast, though. This is a triple confirmation of the resurrection, right? The women were the first people, ladies, the women were the first people to see Jesus come back from the dead. And the men didn't even believe them, right? But now, not once, not twice, but three times, the men are catching up. And the men have seen Jesus, they've touched Jesus, they've eaten with Jesus, they've talked with Jesus, and these men are our eyewitnesses. The reason we believe today is because they were very careful and very sure that this was Jesus and that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus overcame death. And that is the fishing story of John 21. Now, I'm sure this is ready. And as my wife's name. Okay. Jesus then spends some special time with Peter. And he asks Peter three questions. Do you love me? Do you love me? And do you love me? And every time Peter says, you bet I love you. I really love you. I love you so much, Jesus. Look at my heart, Jesus. You know everything. I love you. And so this is Jesus' way to give Peter a way back, right? And Peter trusts Jesus again, and they're okay. That's really working well. Can you hear it? This is going to be good. I hope to not burn it. And Peter learns two things. Number one, Peter learns that actually... When he gets older, he's going to die on like the cross for Jesus. He's going to be what we call a martyr. He's going to give his life for his faith in Jesus. And the second thing he learns is very simple, and it's for all of us to learn. Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. And this is Jesus' word to you and to me, for as long as God gives us to live, follow me. Now, I'm getting worried. Should I be worried? The last part of the story is about another disciple, and this disciple, his name is John, and this is the Gospel of John. This is a book that he wrote to tell us these things so that we would know today 
and we would be sure today. John has a special name in his own book about Jesus. He doesn't call himself John. He calls himself the disciple Jesus loved. Did you know that actually you, when you trust in Jesus, you can call yourself the disciple Jesus loves? You can use that name. Anyway, let's listen to what John says. This disciple, the disciple Jesus loves, is the one who testifies to these events and has recorded them here. And we know that his account is accurate. Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that will be written. And just a little bit earlier, he says, these things are written down so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. We have reliable witnesses. Jesus is alive. Jesus is kind. Jesus has overcome death and gives us forgiveness and life. It's such a powerful chapter from God's word, the Bible, in John 21. The last question that Jason put up on the screen, do you remember that? How should we respond? How have you responded to Jesus? And if we can have the very last slide from my slideshow, please, Minraj. The very last one. Keep going. Yeah. I want to say Jesus extends an invitation to all of us. Someone's having some fun out there. It's probably your car, Paula. And Jesus, he might not invite you to actually have breakfast, but he invites you to share with him for forever in his home. And Jesus says, as for you, don't compare yourself to other people. As for you, yes, you, follow me. This is his invitation. How should we respond? By following Jesus. It's that wonderful and it is that simple. God bless all of you and thank you for enjoying my food and listening to my talk.